So, Kurt, tell us, what are we looking at here? So you're looking at a uh, matrix array through mode force sensor that is uh, that can be found inside of the, the instrument that's currently being played by uh, Fee Bui. Um, so it's a it's a force sensor that allows the musician to expressively interact with their instrument and with their music. They do this through force sensors, which is uh, allows you to push through a force sensing ink that gives you a variation in conductance, and that's then interpreted by the electronics of the instrument to give you changes in pitch and timber, velocity sensing, and all that sort of thing. So how's it constructed? Uh, it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward, really. It's, uh, it's layers of polyester uh, with some uh, conductive traces, uh, silver traces, uh, force sensing ink, which is sort of the secret sauce. Uh, and that's what Tangio Printed Electronics does, is we, we help our, take our part customers from, uh, from the design idea through prototyping in through to uh, global mass production. That's excellent. And tell me about some of the other things you want to show here. So, these applications? Yeah, well, we have, well actually, th these are very standard. These are, the, these are starting from scratch for, for engineers. These are available on our website. Uh, there are four sensors you can buy online. The intended target is engineers that have an idea, they want to use force sensors in their application. They buy it online, test it out, see how it works, and then get to the next phase, which is different shapes, different sizes, different sensitivities for whatever application they might have. So how are these different from conventional force sensors? What can you do with these you can't do with other types? Other types? Well, it's uh, there's uh, the force sensors we make are more uh, temperature stable. Yes. Uh, low drift, so part to part repeatability, um, different ranges as well, so rather than simply just being touching, you can also, you can build this differently, so let's say you need to have a car drive over top of it and still have some sort of threshold uh, change or some sensing of, of different weights. Uh, so there's different, there's tons of different applications and uh, that you can do lots with it. Right. Let's tell us about your company. So you buy the materials, but you create these sensors and systems around them? That's right, yeah. Well, not, uh, we, we make the sensors for the most part. Yeah. As time goes on, we've been, uh, we've been increasing our capabilities and, and working with, uh, with technology developers to give the full package, not just the sensor, but also the controller and the software to basically, basically give them a full develop, development kit to take an idea all the way through to production. And so you're one of many companies in Canada working with electronics. And Thomas, you're, you work at NRC, yep. um, overlooking the print electronics activity there. Tell us a bit yes. about NRC. Yes, thank you. So National Research Council in Canada, we're developing technologies for um, industry and then we're transferring to our partners, some of which are actually exhibiting with us. We're very grateful for uh, ID Tech X to give us good visibility, but I guess Tangio is providing the entertainment on so how to <laughs> compete. Um, so here around the pavilion you have 10 co-exhibitors representing a very nice cross-section of the plus 70 plus members of the ecosystem in Canada. Some of them providing advanced nanomaterials, some of them at, uh, manufacturing devices like Tangio, or some other ones uh, providing some uh, end-use scenarios like uh, the wearables in the back or packaging right in the front here. And Peter here has created within one year an association of Prince Electronics in Canada with now 70 members, over 70 members. That's, Tell us about what the association is doing. Well, thank you, Raghu. We really appreciate uh, ID Tech X being the first member in our association last year at this show. And uh, we built the association through our hard work with our members and our, our partners within our Canadian industry. And uh, among them, of course, our flagship program at the National Research Council and good partners like Xerox and uh, you know companies like Tenjo Electronics who, who is really bringing out the innovation from our, our, our ecosystem. So our goal is to uh, bring different focus to our industry including you know entertainment, intelligent packaging, intelligent connected buildings and, and shortly we'll be moving into healthcare. That's our aspirations to, to bring together the full supply chain right from materials right up to the end users. This is the instrument designed by Roger Lin and uh, we have right here with uh, Fee Bui, a uh, sound producer and uh, record, uh, composer who's been playing uh, the instrument today and doing fantastic. Yeah. So, so what do you think about uh, this instrument? What's yeah, special about it? It's, uh, it sets itself um, in a different level compared to a normal MIDI controller because it has um, 
more nuanced uh, detail of uh, expression. So it's it's more expressive than just a MIDI controller where you bend the note with uh, with a slide on the side. So for example, um, something like this. It's a very natural vibrato compared to uh, other MIDI. Keyboards. So there's different ways to to hit each key. Uh, yeah, there's um, there's slides and there's. Um, let me get a different sound. Um, uh, How long have you been uh, playing with this one? Uh, just a few months, but <laughs> but if uh, if I spent more time with it, I, it could. Uh, it has a lot of potential to uh, um, to really. Uh, in every musician studio, I think. Are you the only one in the world to use it, or is no, some people uh, are able to use buy this? It's, it's for sale now. It's it's commercially available. Since when? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I think uh, at least for the last six to eight months. Uh, Roger Lynn Designs, I think. If you search for Roger Lynn or the instrument, you'll find it online. All right. All right. So, uh, what can you do with it? Uh, what can you not do with it? Can you do everything? Wow. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it has independent. Um, uh, slides. So if I went, if I slid this guy, the bottom note is still staying there. Whereas in a normal MIDI keyboard controller, it would, both notes would go in the same direction like that. But th th it has independence in that way. Yeah. So it's very expressive. What are all these lights blinking about? Uh, the lights are just um, basically referencing uh, where the notes are for the player's ease, mostly. Um, and you can change um, uh, the way you set it up. So right now we're, we're going in fifths. And I can change it going from... Uh, there. And then I can also go uh, maybe in thirds. Yeah, but so it's mostly for the, the user's uh, preference, just to lay out where he's most comfortable playing. Um, so, yeah. Do you perform with it? Uh, this is my first time performing with it. Yeah, I've, I've used it and uh, recorded some personal tracks just to uh, have in personal pieces and, and, and beats, but never performed live except for today and yesterday. So, so what are people saying that people who show you, you show this to, what do they say? Well, they, they first are very confused as to what it is, because it's a very new layout. Um, it's a totally new uh, skin compared to most MIDI controllers. Um, uh, but I mean, I think once they hear it, what it can do, they, uh, they uh, start to gravitate towards it as a, as a legitimate instrument, I think. Yeah. It's a legit, legitimate instrument? Oh, totally. It's a legitimate instrument. Yeah, for cool. Sure. Yeah. So as soon as it's going to be famous, or what? <laughs> I think so. I think so. It'll catch yeah. on. It'll catch cool. On. Yeah. Maybe you, you can go on a world tour with it. Maybe, yeah, I'll tour with it. It's portable, it's very, uh, it's very thin. Um, it's marketed at a good price. Uh, it's durable. Um, so, and uh, it's not standalone, so it goes through, uh, it ha you have to use it with a computer. Um, could it be for DJs? It could be used for DJs, I think so. Because um, they're with their laptops anyways these days in the 21st century. And they can kind of like perform yeah. with their tracks and right, exactly. everything they, they up. They can spin with their records and then hop over to something like this and then play something a bit more original rather than spinning from pre-recorded sound. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I think it'll catch on, it has a lot of potential.